All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And uh, a lot of stuff going on today. Actually, some very, very exciting news, both in terms of polling data and actually just, Cody, dive right in. Tell us exactly what's going on. This is good stuff. Yeah. Well, a couple things. I mean, I guess uh, to get right to it, we're going to play an audio clip from you. And this is uh, from MSNBC, I believe, or I believe NBC News Director um, Chuck, Chuck Todd, Todd. who's... Uh, I believe a few months or a few weeks back, he said, look, I'm done. Uh, after the debate, after the fourth debate, he did say, look, I'm done underestimating Andrew Yang. This guy has done a lot. He's moving. He's raised money. We can't underestimate the guy anymore. But I want, I want you to listen to this clip with, uh, uh, really quick card. And actually, I got a video. I'll play the video. He's one of the only mainstream media people better. I actually used to DVR and watch was Meet the Press. He's the host of Meet the Press, the Sunday show. Uh, well, he, there's a, long a leftist, but not a filthy leftist. There we go. No. <laughs> <laughs> One of the good ones. He doesn't get the bullet, so to speak. Anyway, um, I'm going to play so a short excerpt of the clip, but listen to what he had to say here when he's talking about some of the 2020 candidates coming up and what he actually thinks the election is going to pan out as. So That could be the wild card here that if Bernie starts to recede is Andrew Yang. This is an American college. Right? Andrew is, Yang. Wow. Is, there <laughs> you is heard a, it here, folks. No, there is a, I'm not saying Andrew Yang's going to be a nominee or anything, but Yang, there's a part of the Bernie base and the Yang base that, that interacts. The people that haven't left Bernie for Warren haven't left Bernie for a reason. I'll let you guys decide what that reason is. They're more likely to go to Biden or Yang. Than okay. And there we go. Well, we'll have the, the full clip. He also in the clip, I think another interesting thing I want to bring up. He says, he, he, he says, look, I don't think it's going to be Warren or Biden or Sanders or one of these three people mm -hmm. who really takes this thing. I think there's going to be someone that comes along. He's leaning more towards um, Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg and Cory Booker. Cory Booker really sucks. Well, to can me you right. play he, the? He thinks that Cory Booker. I got to play more of the clip. Yeah, but he, he's thought okay. that Cory Booker could could do well. And I'll just see if I can play some audio. Well, his his reasoning was very interesting, and actually his insight, and at least being able to understand. I, I I disagree with a lot of his politics, but I don't disagree with a lot of Chuck Todd's ability to measure the playing field and have his ears to the railroad tracks. He was one of the first people that said, um, not Klobuchar from Minnesota, but who was the woman from Iowa that ran and she wore the camouflage heels and she had the very controversial campaign ad, campaign ad where she neutered the cow camouflage. with a knife. I have no idea. Camouflage heels? I'm looking oh, her up. She's camouflage? a female candidate who is uh, an army veteran, big smile, and she ran, I believe it was in Iowa, and she had the controversial campaign ad where she, you know, when you cut the NUTSs off a cow and you neuter a cow. Oh, would it be a Joni Ernst? Yeah, Joni Ernst. That's go. it. He was one of the only people uh, that was able to effectively. She, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, he uh, he was able to kind of effectively say, you know what? I think actually she could take this. While a lot of people were trying to dismiss her as like a joke candidate, and uh, there's a very famous incident incident when he analyzed her campaign bus and why it was so successful at messaging that actually kind of gave me a uh, uh, a much better opinion of his analysis. So anyway, I'm not here to fanboy Chuck Todd. Dude, but politicians are so lame, man. But, really, you are yeah. camouflage heels to give you a bottle of the State of the Union? No, no, yeah. no respect to heels. Cam <laughs> you know, if a male oh, wore camouflage, cool. camouflage no, heels? No, if someone wore camouflage, you know, whatever, Oxfords to give their state of the union a ball. Yeah, Same but then thing. they that's wouldn't be lame. Oxfords. Then we, they would that's, be camo pants. It's all lame. That's cool. No, no, Oxfords, I think a woman can pull that too. off. There's Oxford shoes too. Look, just because it's a shoe I'm, style. You know, I'm just so pro woman. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't mean that aside. That we got to argue about this, all right, Doc? I, I think politics <laughs> are lame. Politicians are lame. That aside. So but, anyway, but yeah, keep but, going. Sorry, sorry, but what I wanted to get into here, and again, I'll play a little bit more of the clip with Chuck Todd, so you guys can hear what he's talking about. I want to put that Andrew Yang bit at the, at the front. I thought it was a little interesting how he even said like. I think Andrew Yang is going to peel off Bernie supporters who haven't left him yet. That was a. It is kind of always fun to hear these these media pundits speaking candidly and honestly. Yeah. Like, not like with like, oh my god, what are the bosses gonna think? Or I'm on I'm on you know, for the network. Yeah. We'll just speak freely. Like, yeah, you know, the more I think about it, I don't think these people will do well. I think Andrew Yang he could peel Bernie voters. You're never yeah. gonna hear that on TV. It's really funny. Hearing him and his it. analysis is cool. Is that what you're playing right now? Yeah. Let's check yes. out. This is him talking about the front runners right now. I feel about where we're headed. Really? I don't think any of us. Anybody that tells you they know what's gonna happen, give me a break. Yes. Really? I'll say this. I've I said that on the show many times. I, if I could make one bet right now, the only bet I'd be comfortable saying in public is. I think somebody not named Warren, Sanders, or Biden will finish in the top three in Iowa, and that that person mm. will be the sort of, the, 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 that that person could be the candidate X that everybody's been wondering, who would be the alternative to Biden if Biden collapsed? 
Well, the best likely, it, and, and here's what I would say, then I would, if, if somebody finishes third not named Warren, Biden, or Sanders, I think that person becomes a big deal. And you don't want to fill in the blank. Well, Doesn't no, that think, sound familiar? And then he goes on again. He goes on in this clip just to mention uh, Booker and Biden. Well, can Booker you just finish playing Buttigieg. the rest? I think that was a good analysis. Can okay. you play the rest of that? People forget Iowa Democrats are more religious than about Pete uh, average Democrats. Speaking of Pete Buttigieg right now. Um, Democrats as a whole are a little more secular, obviously, than, than, than the country as a whole. Godless. But people. in Iowa, many Democrats are still, are still weekly churchgoers. So is Pete. I think Booker has a chance to be that candidate out of Iowa too. He's got a very good campaign of that sort of the, the um, and the person best, I think the person that is going to, that could be the wild card. And then this is just back to the Andrew Yang comments from before. Yeah. So I, I thought it was interesting though, again, just hearing any of these news comments, because by the way, can Chuck God, Chuck Todd go and meet the press and say, anyone that tells you they know what's going to happen in this election is lying? No, you can't go on TV and say that as a... Oh, he, he's not on your, the time. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, you have to be more tepid with it. But, but you're, you're generally your not... to yeah. tell people what's going on with the election. People like, don't want to tune into you to say, <laughs> I'm clueless. Yeah. We're just spitballing here. Yeah, no one knows. I'm just making stuff up. So it's always fun seeing Candid. But I want to take a look at this. What is he talking about here? And a poll came out today that actually kind of really backs up a lot of what Chuck Todd said, specifically really in reference to um, Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders. I wanted to show you guys this. So Emerson poll drops today. Uh, in the poll, Andrew Yang actually hits 4% nationwide, which is a pretty good number to hit nationwide for him right now. Uh, he's still trying to break out. Like I said, I think these things have like a six-week lag. But the I think devil's we're, in we're, the details. We're start, well, even big, bigger than that, even yeah. more so. So you'll notice this was a poll that Bernie Sanders actually did very well in. National poll, October 18th through 21st through the 21st, conducted by Emerson. It looks like sample size is about 430 people, if I'm reading that correctly, with a uh, margin of error about 5%. I love mm -hmm. that. So Andrew Yang's either at 9 or negative 1. We don't know. Yeah. It's in the margin of error. <laughs> but but still, I mean, obviously it works different than that. But if you look, Andrew Yang, 4%, good showing for him. Weird poll, I want to say Kamala Harris at 5% nationally. What? Why? Anyway, moving on. Biden winning, uh, Warren takes the back seat to Sanders, which is not what we're seeing as a whole. One well, it thing, depends on the poll, yeah. yeah but one going. thing that's been interesting that hasn't been talked about a lot, because as soon as everybody started taking Warren for granted as the front runner, she dropped on the polls immediately yeah. and receded. <laughs> She's no longer really the front runner as much. But what's even more fascinating is that when you go down and take the deeper look at these numbers, that Emerson actually highlights this. They say Sanders continues to dominate the 18 through 29 age group with 45% of the vote, followed by Warren at 17 and Andrew Yang with 15% of the voter. Boom. Uh, as voters get older, Sanders sees a support drop with 28% amongst 30 to 49 and only 15 of those 50 to 64. 6% of voters over 65. Wow. Biden being more popular with old, older voters and it continues. But I thought it was really fascinating because yes, you can definitely see. I thought that was an really interesting way Chuck Todd actually framed that. He said, people who haven't left Bernie yet, there's a reason. But if they leave, they're probably going to go to Yang, which I agree with. Not only, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing when it comes to the young vote, which, by the way, is where Bernie Sanders, is, that's his base. I mean, yeah. looking at this, it's one poll, but yeah, millennial types is the Bernie Sanders base. You can see he dominates that age group, but Warren and Yang are moving up there. And again, if I could see Sanders voters peeling I would see them being probably younger voters peeling to another younger candidate or uh -huh. candidate popular amongst younger voters. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren aren't young themselves, no offense. But very interesting to see Andrew Yang is the guy there. And then just really quickly flashing over to where he is now, taking a look at, and this is just the uh, real clear politics aggregate. There's been a couple of really good uh, non traditional polls for Yang recently. Just polls that don't show up on real clear, but like yeah. he was getting like double digits, like really big gains. Yeah. That weren't just Russian spam bots. No, I mean it, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't Joe's YouTube poll. It was like yeah. a legitimate polling centers. They just weren't picked up by this. But even then, you look at this and Andrew Yang uh, with the, with the four percent in that last poll. I think, like I said, I think there's like a six seven week lag on these polls from when people see something till they change their mind in the booth or then change yeah. their mind polling. I think we're going to start seeing it. And really interesting is that Andrew Yang now is polling at. I mean, he's within, what, one or two points? If things continue at this trend, he could be within one or two points of Harris and Buttigieg moving forward. And now, to kind of but not this wrap all, it up, but there's okay. one more important number to look at here. Because what Chuck Todd was specifically talking about, and this is one thing I want to do, it's not, this, is just, this is the facts. So, he was talking specifically about Iowa, one of those early states, I believe one of the, I think the earliest or like tied for, and the, the 3rd of February, come on, a few months, right? 
His point, which is really interesting, is like, look, if somebody surprises us and finishes second or third even in Iowa that we didn't expect, that's huge. Because the primaries, the main primary season is still like a, like a month away, basically. Uh huh. So let's look at how are Iowa primaries going right now. And he, well, him saying, him referencing Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg, by the way, is at 14% in Iowa right now, which is crazy good. He's like at seven or eight national, 14% in Iowa. Andrew Yang in Iowa is in basically tied for seventh place with Tulsi Gabbard and Amy Klobuchar and Cory Booker at 2%. So Iowa hasn't necessarily been kind to Andrew. He yeah, actually he had, struggled there. In a recent CBS YouGov poll, he got a zero. Oh. He got harambe You know what I mean? One of these polls. He was below the Harambe. Ouch. Actually, generally speaking, two percent and you're below the Harambe line, which is if yeah. you if you're but if you're below other, I consider like the Haram like the right in line, you're below you know Stephen Colbert, basically. Mm-hmm. Um it's been a bad state for Yang. So that is really interesting. Um because I, I just and again, not we're we're, we're obviously not Chuck. Chuck Todd stands over here, but just that was a little interesting comments he made, and I want to take a deeper look at him. So we can see Iowa probably isn't going to be the breakthrough Yang is going to need, um, but that could be what Volt Buttigieg. However, like I said, just taking a, a look at the national numbers again, you can see that nationally with this latest poll by this latest poll by Emerson, Andrew Yang might finally start creeping up again uh, where he had before. But the big thing is, yes, looking at amongst young voters. Andrew Yang is actually polling very similar. I mean, 45 is a pretty daunting number, but still, amongst younger voters, you can see Andrew Yang is moving and surging, and he's doing very well there. So, yes, Bernie Sanders, if he does lose those voters, Andrew Yang is probably where they will go. I think we're trying to look at who's going to go through. He doesn't have to drop out for Andrew Yang to make great gains off the Bernie crew. He only has to move from 3% of the polls to 9% of the polls off Bernie Sanders supporters to really start shaking things up. Uh, Iowa, though... Man, Iowa's a problem for Andrew Yang. I don't know what he's gonna do about Iowa. He spends a lot of time there. He's like I said, as recent as October 2019, he's getting zero percent in CBS polls. So, I don't know. What, I guess what do you think about all this? But especially, man, Iowa. What is he I, doing in you, Iowa? No, but okay. First off, we'll we'll address the Iowa question after I say this. All sounds very familiar to me. On October 16th, we made the video. It's still one of our most popular videos about how. These debates portend, in my mind, that Andrew Yang is about to take off. Okay? And I'm not the only one feeling it. Doesn't surprise me that Chuck Todd, another guy whose opinion I uh, generally respect in terms of having a feel for the playing field, also feels like... Oh, we are Todd stands then? Uh... We are what? Are we fans of Chuck Todd over here now? Uh, no, I, I would say I I'm like fine. Chuck no, I'm Todd. Fine I don't, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of his politics, but okay. um, the few times he's actually expressed them as saying, like, this is my personal belief. But um, I, I think he does a, a fairly decent job amongst the chattering class. You know, he does a fairly decent job of seeing the lay of the land. That's actually a better way of putting it, is seeing the lay of the land. Like in golfing, what is your lie? I think he's <laughs> he's got a decent idea of... Um, you know, the lay of the land. And this sounds all very familiar and augments my existing opinion that Andrew Yang is, is you know, that pot that's boiling and it's going to overboil in a second, okay? The energy is there. It is a feeling. This is anecdotal. This is an opinion, okay? We've got some stats that through confirmation bias can either confirm it uh, or deny it, depending on how you want to interpret the data. But that is generally my feeling. And I do say on October 16th, I said it. And I reference that. I say October 16th is a day that will de- live in infamy on this podcast because I I believe that um, I, I believe it's going to happen. Okay. Now, in regards to the Iowa thing, um, geez, what a challenge for Andrew Yang. It's Iowa has, I mean, you want to talk about the electoral college not being fair. How about how much power Iowans have. I mean, when you and I went to the Santa Monica event... If you want to talk about gerrymandering, if you uh, can uh, find out what state your candidate wins in and make that... Of course, Iowa's been early state well, for a while, but it, still, you know what I mean? We see this in the comments all the time. We see this in, uh, in the forums all the time. When we went to our first event in Santa Monica, it, it was hilarious. Everybody had to introduce themselves, and somebody introduced themselves. There was this... Um, a uh, really nice young Asian girl that was like, oh, hi, my name's, you know, Stacy or whatever it was. Yeah. And also I'm from Iowa. And <gasps> it was like, you know, Justin Bieber had just walked in the room. And on our comments for our video about how the L.A. Uh, L.A. rally was lit, 
it was hilarious. A bunch of comments said, oh yeah, the, the party was totally awesome. I love this part. And there were six Iowans there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you want to talk about the Electoral College making it so that like four votes in New York aren't as important as one vote in Wyoming. Let's talk about how much power Iowa has. And it's a very strange animal. OK, now it's, it's a strange animal that I happen to generally agree with more than anyone else. But I'm intellectually honest enough to say just out in the open who I disagree with and who I, 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 I don't disagree with. And though I may align politically more with maybe your average Iowan, OK, uh, especially in Chuck Todd's analysis of, hey, you know, like they still go to church weekly. They're still very traditional like that, so on and so forth. OK, I'm also intellectually honest enough to say. It's not necessarily fair that a certain breed within a diverse society has that much control like Iowa does. OK, well, then specifically. And, and you got to wrangle that beast in order to ride it. And it doesn't seem like Andrew Yang has figured out the sweet sauce for wrangling the Iowa beast. But it's a beast you need to wrangle because so often in these early states in in Iowa, in New Hampshire, and then people forget very close behind, I believe, is Nevada. And then North Carolina is the first, first fourth. Uh, fact check me on South that. South Carolina. I South Carolina is the yes. fourth. And yeah. Then, um, and then I think coming up after that, uh, California, Texas and Massachusetts. All of, well, then you start having Super Tuesday. States. Exactly. Yeah. So those are like but, the first band. I guess. Yeah. But those first four literally develop the opinion of so many people. Literally think of it this way. If. 20 of your buddies who don't really follow football and haven't chosen a team show up late for your Super Bowl party. Okay. And it's already halftime. They made it for the halftime show and they sit down and they say, Oh cool. Well, who's winning? Like, uh, you know, and, and if they're getting all of their facts after the game has already started, chances are they might start rooting and science shows this. They might start rooting for the winning team or psychologically they might actually uh, root for the underdog. But, um, it affects the psychology of so many undecided voters who they're going to go to in the booths. And so many people wait back and see, you know, instead of it being this national election that happens on the same day, it's this weird kind of progressive election in which uh, Iowa comes in first and the New Hampshire starts voting at midnight. So they're almost just as relevant as Iowa. And and, and there's there's all of these psychological stimuli that happen that can affect voters in later states that makes it seem a little bit unfair in Iowa. So um, Iowa is, yes, it's more traditional. Yes, it's much smaller population. Yes, it's much more rural in many aspects. And so you got to edit your game for there. And it doesn't seem like I, 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 Andrew Yang's doing that. I know he's hired staff. He hired the big, uh, jolly and happy looking guy um, to run his, his Iowa campaign. But he's always showed up low in the polls there. And I don't know why. I, actually, I can't say I don't know why. He appeals very much to younger voters, and there's a lot of obviously much older voters there. Uh, he does very well in the urban areas that are like these huge internet entertainment centers. You know, he does huge and awesome big college towns, so on and so forth. And when you say all of these things, you don't very adequately describe Iowa. They got a college, right? Oh, no, a college, yes. Well, no, they've got more than a college, yes, and they do have running water. And I'm not here to slam Iowa. I've actually been there. There's many aspects of no, Iowa that I are surprisingly beautiful. They do only have, like, I think one or two big universities, right? You, there's the, the the I'm just coming at it from like yeah, a but I, yeah, I'm not saying it's not like Manhattan, Manhattan where you throw a stick and there's a college. Oh, I agree. You know what I'm saying? And time, yeah. and you throw a stick and there's a youth hostel, and you throw a stick and there's a major entertainment corporation. It's not like Los Angeles where you know there are no sticks, and <laughs> you know you trip over a homeless person and you've tripped onto the front door of an entertainment company. You know no, what I'm saying? And, so and again, like you said, Yang doing very well amongst young people. Fifteen percent amongst amongst the youth, the youths. Yeah. So, do you think Chuck Todd is right? You think Chuck Todd is right when he says that Andrew Yang could be the wild card? Absolutely. Yes, and, and that, that the top three are not going to be well, the top and three. And that yes. the Bernie people who haven't left Bernie yet, if they do leave, it probably will be at this. Well, point Scott Santons and us, and we, and ourselves, and we and Scott Santons. Wow, that was brutal. But um, we talked about this with Scott Santons, okay, and. And when it, when we were saying, you know, who's it easier to kind of convert, for lack of a better term, to this idea and possibility of UBI? And uh, he said, you know, I'm surprised on the left how there's a lot of people that they just want the revolution. You know what I'm saying? And George Orwell said this exact same thing in Road to Catalonia. He said, you know, there's socialists who are socialists like me who want to help the poor. And then the socialists that just hate rich people. You know what I'm saying? And... Um, 
you know, you're, if, if you're making a good positive case that UBI could help the poor, it could help the middle class or it could help the economy or whatever, then those more cerebral socialists are going to say, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll go with this better idea, you know, because that, that sets with my values of helping the poor. Meanwhile, if you're talking to that other half that are just like, we just want the revolution. We hate rich people. Well, then they're not going to get converted no matter what, unless you can convince them that you're going to hurt the rich more and you're going to start the revolution faster. And that's not what Andrew Yang proposes. He's a solution over revolution guy, as we've talked about on this podcast. So that's why I think Chuck Todd notices, similarly to us, that there's a lot of people, you know, if you haven't left Bernie yet, you're not going to ever leave him. Or well, you might, but if you do, you're probably not going to Elizabeth Warren. I think it's a good point. Yeah. And just really quickly highlighting where Bernie is in the polls, because we're talking so much about him. Um, if you can see this little dip from Bernie Sanders right here on the right, is the blue line uh, in the middle there? Oh, and real clicks to refresh all the time. Anyway, you'll notice he took this pretty substantial dip, and he's kind of been recovering towards it. A very recent spike in the polls. That dip is basically when he had that first health scare. Um, so I, I, one thing I do think is important to note with Bernie Sanders, it's not fair, but hey, it is what it is. I think he's one or two more health scares away from really losing a lot of support. Fair or not, it's just we can literally look at the polls. He had a health scare. His polling dropped big time. He's had a good return, good comeback, and has recovered. But it's, it, it, it's, it's not fair that's the situation, but that's just the reality, man. Like At a certain point, it's like if it's close, it's like, well, Elizabeth Warren didn't have two heart issues in an eight-month window. I'm saying if. If, he's, if he goes on and he's totally healthy and there's nothing else that comes up after that, People will probably forget it was even a thing in a few months. But it is worth noting, that does lead to a dramatic hit in the polls. Like, he did not, he, he has not actually recovered from that yet. So, yeah. and asking, like you said, why people will leave Bernie, maybe that's, maybe Bernie at one point says, look, I'm having issues, I have to drop out. It sucks, but it is what it is. That's when all of a sudden, though that vote that people think that can go to Yang could really matter. And again, wishing Bernie absolute best of health. I'm just saying, projecting realities where that could be what happened. I could see that happening by another health issue and just having to drop out, unfortunately, which could be a boom to you. Rock on. So anyway, let us know what you guys think. And uh, please, make a comment below. We still try and respond to all the comments. Um, I'm still trying to get through all the comments about the people that didn't like what I said about the hill. <laughs> and uh, um, If you guys want to contribute to the channel, please check out the, uh, um, the PayPal link in the description and hang out with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we answer a lot of voicemails and uh, oftentimes have a chance to talk live or at least chat live with um, a lot of you guys, the audience, and opine on uh, all of this going on in the 2020 election. This is Problem Solver Politics. We will see you guys in the next video.